The first thing I did that was in the public eye that involved creative dog grooming, I stupidly went on YouTube and like read the comments and <laughs> it was awful. Like people were saying I should be dragged into an alley and shot. I mean, ridiculous. So it in the beginning when I used to read those comments, it, it made me mad and I would want to like fight back, you know, and argue and like tell them my side of the story. Um, and then over time, I've realized that that's counterproductive. I mean, you really want to just explain to people with kindness because people don't react well to being yelled at. So I just try to explain, you know, all of the products. I think people just don't understand and they don't know. So they assume that it's unsafe. So I like to explain, you know, we use all non-toxic safe products that are fine for use on dogs. It's all temporary. It grows out, washes out. I did develop like more of a candor in communicating back with people. Um, that interview, like it, I, they weren't, I wasn't expecting it to be so yeah. attacking, you know. So my poor face, like you can watch my face change from being happy to being like irritated. But um, the dogs definitely have a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't get these perfectly clean, straight color lines on a dog that's moving all yeah. over the place. Yeah. And anyone who's ever tried to give a dog a bath, like in a bathtub at home, <laughs> understands that they have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I have to say that like, as a filmmaker, it was definitely something that I wanted to foc that I wanted address in the film. I mean, it wasn't a focus, but it was definitely needed to be focused mm -hmm. on. Um, and it was really hard to figure out a way to show the criticism of it because, like, the women would address it directly, but then when I went to ask people what they thought, they were like, by and large, when people see dogs in person and they're happy and they're adorable and they're like kind of taking naps, they don't have any problems with it, and it's really just online comments. So that one clip that Kat mentions, which is in the film, is like one of the only times I could find someone really ad like directly attacking about this because with a short conversation, I think most of those worries are assuaged. Toby is my creative partner. When you don't have a child, but you have a poodle. I couldn't live without dogs, that's for sure. All of the creative groomers who've been around for a few years have had had experiences before with film crews coming and following and and doing things so um and we they weren't necessarily all positive i mean some were i mean it's not like they they were making fun of us or anything but it just seemed like they were trying to to make it more like a reality tv kind of thing mm -hmm. versus documentary and just kind of telling the story so i did approach it with a little bit of skepticism at first and um I probably at first wasn't as open or welcoming of her questions, but then after, over the course of time, you know, the more the questions went on, it became clear that, you know, she was trying to tell the story for what it was mm -hmm. and not trying to create drama where there wasn't any. And I think like the process of making a documentary is so long mm -hmm. that you have to like become friends or at least like really get to know the people <clears throat> who are on either side of the camera. Yeah. Um, and also she didn't try to like, I feel like, Part of her story was was telling about the camaraderie and like how much all of us are friends and how much we we really do get along. And a lot of the other people who approached us were kind of more trying to create cattiness between us when there really isn't a lot of that. It's mm -hmm. mostly just everyone's friendly and we're happy when each other wins. Yeah, it's not, no manufactured drama. This is all right. real documentaries. Right to the north. If you're in the grooming industry, this is the place to be. Once you get on that stage, it is a competition. So the structure of the film really did start to come to play around kind of Hershey as the big one, because that's when I, when I showed up and started asking people what they cared the most about. Oftentimes it was Hershey, and that was something that they were really perfecting their designs to go towards. So all the creative groomers, you do it one design a year, um, and you have to like kind of tweak it and make sure that it's perfect for the next show, and then take judges' comments, and then tweak it again for the next one. And Hershey was like, the last hurrah for a lot of these designs. So I thought that that would be like the good place to end the film. Um, I won't give anything away, of course. There's a big reveal ending, but which means everyone has to watch the whole thing. Um, <laughs> but I also did a short film two years before making the feature. So through the short film, I kind of did all of that research um, and started understanding what the pace and the beat of the competitions were. So like. Hershey might be the most important one or like the biggest one or the one that everyone's driving towards, but what are like the other competitions that happen along the way that provide a, a real insight into what people want to do? I want to be as good as all the others. 
if I don't win, you don't need to be there because I'm sad. The way I groom is more artistic than technical. I started to have a lot of success. Eventually, I even got first. The presentation portion of the creative grooming contest um, is, in my opinion, like you said, a little bit superfluous. I mean, I think it's about the dog and about the grooming and not a, a talent show about who can sing the best or do the best skit. Um, and it has nothing to do with the placements, first, second, and third. Um, the judges decide for second and third before the presentations have even happened. Mm -hmm. So the presentations are simply for the People's Choice Award. So you want to do the most outlandish thing you can do to get the crowd to scream as loud as possible because that's how they decide who gets People's Choice. Um, and I'm not a shy person, but like I, I'm not into like singing in public or like dancing or acting. You know, I'm a groomer, not an actress. So I have never really like been that successful at the presentation <laughs> thing, but I have won People's Choice one time. <laughs> we can make you an actress. We can try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I mean, an aside, but it's funny to be, I was on the IMDb page for this and it's like, your, your name's on there, you know? You're, yeah, you're, it's you're like, an actress now. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I was completely taken aback by the presentation <laughs> element of it. I had def the first time I saw it was after an entire weekend of hearing about all this craft that goes into making these standard poodles become art pieces of artwork. And then all of a sudden everyone was singing and dancing and I was like, this is hilarious. Um, and I just like added a certain like yet another level of kitsch. And so like for that, I loved it. Uh, and I think that people get really into it. How much does he weigh? I don't know, like 10,000 pounds. Look at the middle. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. The lady was like, I forgot to feed him his breakfast. Should I bring him his meal? We were like, I think he can skip breakfast today. Oh man, I learned so much about dog grooming. Growing up, I had labs and lab pit mixes, and we definitely should have been taking them to the groomer. Like that was one of the things that I learned was like, what were we doing? Um, like all the things that dog that dog groomers do, all the things that they go through. Um, it was also just kind of fascinating to learn a little bit more about um, small business owners all across America. So like, I know that that's, that's not necessarily the funniest aspect of the film, but it is real. Like these are all women who all own their own businesses um, and have to like go through the process of really generating their own client base and then doing all of it while like taking care of like what I'm pretty sure is my child. So like that it's like, it's a stressful job. Um, and I learned about that. And then Kat and Adrian and Angela and Nicole, um, somewhat all helped me train my dogs. So that was like very helpful. Oh, nice little tricks. Uh, 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 yeah. Little yeah, tricks I, on how to train. I would, I would, <laughs> I would text in and you'd just be like, I don't know the answer to this. I'm not in New York. <laughs> Part of the film, we drove basically across America um, with all the women and you can kind of see that in there. Um, although a lot of it didn't end up making the film. Um, and you drive and drive and drive and notice just like so many different box stores just everywhere. And like the kind of how America is just becoming really very similar to each every single aspect of America, right? Like you can be in the South, you can be in the North, you don't entirely know where you are, but where you can find really like very specific shops is groom shops and like that they're popping up more and they're becoming more popular and people are taking better care of their pets. And it's like, it's an entirely burgeoning industry that's really run by women who are small business owners. And so that was like fascinating to me. Um, I only wish that I could highlight even more of them. <laughs> yeah.